Hey, this is Robert of MayflowerBookshop.com. I'm looking at a little pot of flowers, yellow roses, and you know, there's like 10 or 12 roses in all different stages. Like some are like real elegant old people and the flowers lost its color, but it's all, the, the flowering petals are blah, they're all over the place like they're like you're near the end of a beautiful symphony orchestra music and that you're playing your part out to the fullest and other roses are like small and budded a couple of them and just opened one or two and then other ones are in between and I was thinking upon pondering how in the first 30 years of our life we're trying to open to the blue sky through all the ever-changing clouds of thoughts and feelings. And in, from 30 to 60, generally speaking, we're stabilized as if in a temporal permanence. We don't realize everything's impermanent and that there's something undeniably unimaginable. We can never disimagine that is pure awareness, listening, looking, it's only us outwardly that catches up to this eternal peace and connect, connectedness with each other in the world. That real religion and real philosophy and real science bridges the farthest blue sky and star with the deepest core of our heart. And so, some of us are very lucky to have things hold still more or less for a little while. So it looks like we have a permanent job or home or relationship. The first 30 years we're trying to unfold ourselves and from 30 to 60 we're being founded as well as flowering and laying the foundation in quality and virtue for a sense of foreverness and connection. From 60 to 90, we've moved now from body, physical, emotional, mental, to thinking, feeling, and willing, and soul, consciousness, sentient, intellectual, consciousness, soul. And we're moving to the 60 to 90 which all live in our auric egg. It all lives in our everything and stillness point and emptiness at center. And so from 60 to 90, the spirit isn't informing the body so that the body grows up for 30 years. The spirit and body or matter aren't stabilized in a harmony like interlaced triangle from 30 to 60. And from 60 to 90, the spirit is ascending or emerging from the chrysalis of all the forms that we've taken on to express ourselves, all the forms that have taken us on to express themselves. Rudolf Steiner says that after 72, which is the precession of the equinox, you know, when we're going from the age of Pisces to Aquarius, every 72 years, it moves one degree. And you get this 2160 years. This is all tight, but approximate for one age of Aquarius to, you know, into the age of Capricorn. Now it's Pisces going into Aquarius. So when you're 72 years old, uh, Rudolf Steiner says that we're, we've entered, like we've gone like kind of beyond ourselves and that we're spiritually free and you can see how many people sometimes they get get to these stages early because of something that happens good or bad in our eyes good or bad in the long run everything's good in the long run our higher self has set everything up so we'd all grow and no man is an island no 
no manas woman womanas is lost in the ocean of samsara that's it. the ocean of samsara and nirvana can kind of balance themselves out in pleasure and pain can become everything is part of the learning and so so this meditation spontaneous meditation <laughs> that i'm sharing is every once in a while you can hold still and you can be whatever phase the enthusiastic youthful fire of flowering after budding or you can be the full flowering and the realization and the accomplishment and the attainment and the acquiring like you know almost like for the first 30 years we acquire experience and things and from 30 to 60 we may acquire more but we're trying to discover the heart of thinking and willing thinking feeling and willing more than just physical emotional mental on the materialistic plane physical emotional mental mental is the highest but when we go into the spiritual worlds the spiritual way of understanding things thinking sacrifices and surrenders and serves universal mind and universal truth which is um, <clears throat> a quest for the grail and an eternal love rooted in compassion the spirit of 60 to 90 which we can have access we can when we meditate in stillness we're actually accept, assessing and accessing recessing digesting our experience and arising like a rose over the thorns in new awarenesses, new sense of rootedness and peace. Today's meditation, I walked out my door and saw these roses, these yellow roses. I guess there's nine of them. There might be something hiding. There might be three hiding somewhere like the Trinity and the spiritual hierarchies making 12. When you look at Blavatsky's secret doctrine and what she says about the dodecahedron and the 12 signs of zodiac. But I'm wandering. Wandering mind is a problem in meditation. <laughs> the only point I'm making now is that sometimes you sit down and you're so still that all your phases show up at once. All your phases show up at once. All the phases of your, your whole of your life, your birth and all the way to your death and beyond. The unbornness before we're born and life after death. The journey through the planets. Like, you know, we die and for three days especially if we're held peacefully somewhere. For three days, we see our whole life clearly. We see our whole life clearly, and some people say backwards. We review our whole life clearly, exactly what really happened and what we really did, and our most subtle fear, desire, or want, or need, or calling, spirit, virtue. And then for a third of our life, if we live to be 60, that'd be 20 years. If we live to be 21, it'd be one third of that seven. If you live to be 90, one third of it's 30. 60 is 20. <laughs> Gotta add right, but when you die, you'll add right. When you die, when you get totaled and hit pay dirt, like the calculator is really good, the karmic calculator and the reincarnational calibrator to see, you know, the reorchestrator recalibration to see how you did when you hit pay dirt. So after we, one, one what they call dies and the spiritual soul gets too big for the body and we leave our body and drop our body and we have three days that go, this is what Blavatsky says and Rudolf Steiner and many other people, there's three days to review really quickly 
everything that happened. And then Steiner goes into a very interesting rap about how a third of our life is then spent this side of the moon. The soul can't get past the moon and it has to stay here for a third of your life. So if you're if you're 60, that's 20 years. And if you're 21, it's seven, like that. A third of your life. We see how the whole world around us was affected by us. We're in a spiritual world trying to amend, mend, adjust, heal, have a clear vision of what needs to still happen before we can travel on to the sun through Mercury and Venus to the sun. And when the soul gets to the sun, which can take a long time, sometimes seven, eight hundred years to twelve, fourteen hundred years before you reincarnate. So does it take three hundred and some years to get to the sun, or does it take seven hundred years to get to the sun? When we get to the sun, our spiritual soul expands with this wish to go into holiness and wholeness, and we reach the sun. And we all experience our Christ becoming like our Buddha, that we've cut, be kind of become an awakened good egg, good auric egg. We've returned after death, our etheric body to the stars and the memory of everything, clearly of karma that's individual and collective. And as we journey out, we've lost our, we've discarded our physical body, and then we discard our etheric body, the prana, chi, cosmic, little great breath movement and the, with the cosmos. Then we discard our astral body. And we experience being the sun at one with all the avatars and enlightened beings. And then we go on into the starry realms and there's further transcendental, exalted, holy experience. So I've heard from both Steiner and Theosophy and the ancient Rishis in ancient India, the Vedas and Rig Vedas, in time all is holy. And in time we remember loved ones, unfinished something, still to do, and we're reincarnating, coming back to the planetary spheres and picking up our different subtle bodies all the way to reincarnation. But sometimes when you come out of your door and you look at what's outside, in my case, nine yellow roses at different stages of blossoming, rooted in the darkness, at one with the light above and calling forth a flowering from the warmth and light. And, and right in between the dark earth, the rooted earth, the stillness, and the ever-moving planets and stars and clouds and blue sky, is a sense of permanence, even though every day I come out here, some flowers are in bud and some are opening, and they're all at different stages. But it looks like a temporal permanence that we are right now as you listen to this. So you can have moments where you see all your different stages. You can see your stillness, Saturn, warmth. You can see your sun. You can see your Christos, your Hermes, your golden one who can come to know all things and participate. You can see your, your moon ever-changing, adapting. And you can be here on Earth, everything, nothing, and a mind, moving, stillness, and a mind. And we can see the future. We can see how we're all family and friends and community singing our note in one giant symphony of light and love and truth. The Jupiter stage in Steiner's Cosmology, the fifth round in Blavatsky's Secret Doctrine, 
And we can see how everything eventually will be love because we are love. And we have no one to blame but ourselves for where we are, at least from the higher point of view, from the higher self point of view. It is the inner spark of the eternal in the great stillness of the, of the purified, the mother. The virgin space with the spark of the youthful one within us that ever seeks enlightenment. And the old man of the world that we visit for wisdom. We need to look at the world in a spiritual scientific way to learn Mother Nature's way, the Tao, the creative, co-creative mind for harmony art. So I want to share with you a little meditation and that each of us has to, I guess each of us has to find our own way, but we can share notes as fellow students and artists in a, in a vast university that's for the most part invisible because we don't see each other all the time, but we run into each other and we weave in and out like planets, like comets. Some of us are comets. Some of us are butterflies and birds. Some of us are lions. Some of us are bears and cows and bulls and Mithras-like beings. Some of us are angels. All of us have all these different phases. Ego, serpent of wisdom, garden, animals and plants. We all have different places we're at, but we can hold still and see all the phases at once and position ourselves for the day to come, to digest yesterday and to fathom tomorrow by forever being still here today and taking a deep breath. Let go of your breath if you have trouble taking a breath. I breathe all my perceptions into my heart where in stillness I reemerge to bless the world in my day. Blessings heartwise, my friends. This is Robert of MayflowerBookshop.com with today's meditation. Peace.